Alright, so I figured this would be a fun little thing to record. I'm going to, um, you can go into the voxel editor in this engine, right click, duplicate an item, and then from there you can rename it, resize it, and then also you can modify it. So you can have different versions of the same object. A um, little bit of a trick in case you don't want to build objects from scratch, but you want to easily modify objects to add items that are um, will add to sort of what you're going for. Right now I'm going to build a table with an alarm clock, so it'll look something like... might be The alarm clock might be a bit bulky, but this is all sort of a matter of perspective to a certain degree, because the table here looks a lot bigger than what it's going to actually look like. So let's see, I want a red alarm clock. Let's do this. Actually, I should just fill this in. There's no point in not filling this in. Yeah, something like that size-wise. Hmm, maybe not. Maybe not. I think. Depends on the type of alarm you have. Hmm. Let's see. Like this. Then I can go over here and repaint the voxels. So I want to give it sort of a rim around it. Repaint this real quick. Actually, I might want to repaint it all the way through, perhaps. Mm, maybe not all the way through. Maybe, let me see. Maybe go with a red color, light red, all the way for the backgrounds. For the outlines, I mean. Okay, maybe the back, yeah. Just to add a bit of color variation. So here, 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 and then in the center, I kind of wanna I kind of want a um like about 20, 10, 20 years back, they used to have these alarm clocks that were just, I mean, they were clocks, but, you know, they were mixed in with radios where it was just a big brick. And then the front of it had sort of a light, um, a light green tinge to it in terms of the front, uh, the, the screen. And then you could set an alarm. So I want, kind of want something like that. Kind of want something like that for it. Could be construed as like a radio box, but I want a bit more color variation as opposed to just one flat color of black or red or brown. Okay, then from here I will save this and then the map editor go into what you saved. Actually, I may have to... It may not convey what I'm trying to get across. Let me go back in the voxel editor. And let me add something like a, perhaps like a radio antenna, just to give the impression that it's sort of a radio mixed in with an alarm clock. So let me see. Undo this. Oh yeah, I know what I need to do. I need to build it outwards like this. And then start shaving it gradually. Kind of like that. And then from here, Remove certain voxels. Wait, hold on. Add more voxels to the box here. And then one, two, something along the lines of, yeah, like that. There we go. That gives it the impression of like an antenna that's jutting out of it at a slight angle. So that'll work. That'll work. That might work. At the very least, it's a placeholder that I can utilize for now until, well, it, now it kind of looks like a wind-up toy, honestly. So you know what? I take that back. Let's recolor the whole thing to be black with just a green screen, because otherwise it looks, it looks a little strange otherwise. I'm going to back that up, recolor, repaint. It looks very peculiar otherwise. And there's already enough color variation going on with the table. Adding red into it just looks strange. There we go. 
maybe. Let me take a look. Actually, no, that's the right size. I'll go with that for now. And then I want to build um, another asset. I want to save that. Close this. Just close it. You can pick from recent models. Or you can double click on the model you have down here. Open it up. And now you want to start working on a lamp. So what I want to go for a lamp would be maybe to add color variation, go for like a lamp that looks like, let me see, something like this maybe. Nope, nope, don't recolor. Add, add a texture. I want sort of a lamp with like a circular base to a certain degree, or like a unique base to work from and then build up from. So something like that. We'll go with that for, for, for now. And then we'll build from here. I have to be very careful, a bit delicate. Whoops. Probably at the top, a little further, and then at the top we'll round it out. So it'll, it'll look something like this. Hmm, kind of like that. Yeah. And then to give it the impression of light radiating from it, so to speak. I have to still mess around with like ambient occlusion and lighting when it comes to specific pixels. We'll go with something like that for now, I would say. Hmm. I'll go with that for now and just consider that a placeholder unless I decide to stick with it. Hmm. Looks a little odd. Not quite sure if that'll work or not. Let me actually take a look at that again real quick. Again, let's add some color variation just to further emphasize that it's a lamp. Because otherwise, if you have too many um, objects with color variations that are too similar and you're having trouble sort of visualizing with the voxels what you want to create, you sort of have to get tricky with it. And um, instead of creating something that's an exact replica, especially if you're starting out, instead of creating something that's like an exact replica, you kind of want to go for like a general idea. Actually, I could add, let me see. If I add emissive colors, well, that, no, no, never mind, never mind. Okay. Abort, abort that, because I don't think I'm prepared for that. I'm going to have to figure out what to do. I know you can add in emissive colors, or in like transparent colors and stuff like that. I'm going to have to wait and see what I can do with that. I can also add different textures as well. Might be able to make custom textures and import them, but for now, for now, I think this is fine. I think this might do. Yeah, I think that's better. I think it's I think it's still not optimal. It's not perfect, but it's better. It conveys the idea that it's a lamp radiating light better than it would otherwise. Save the map. Okay. And then from here I want to make a computer. So I'll close this. You can go into here, create new one. Um, and then go under object, and I can type something like computer with desk, and then I can get to work on something. Um, in terms of the size of the object, it's going to have to go up to the halfway point here, because at a 16 by 16 by 24 grid dimension, if it goes anywhere past that halfway point, it will extend past the wall. So you'll have a house where the PC and the desk are bigger than the house itself and are breaking the formation. They're basically breaking reality. We don't want that. So what 
I'll do instead is about the halfway point. Anything jutting past this halfway point will also make the object look far too big, similar to this chair. Um, and you want to be very careful about orient um, sizes uh, in terms of grid dimensions because things can look a little awkward at times. Sometimes you just sort of have to make it work. Other times you have to make sure that it's exactly what you're going for. Otherwise it just looks strange. So I'll start with a base foundation like legs. I'm going to go up to about here and the rest of the desk The rest of the desk, or the base of the desk, will be around this point and the PC afterwards. Let me think. Do I want to stick with the brown coloring? Eh, yes, I do. Make like an arch. And be very careful at what angle you're looking at things, though. Because like I said, as you can see, it can get very awkward very quickly if you're not careful. It'll start to like fill out far more than you want it to is the issue. So you have to make sure the angles you're looking at are solid. Let me see, I also want to add a bit more depth here. A bit more depth, yeah. Then from here. Hmm. Something like that, yeah. Two, four, five. Two, four, five. I want to give the impression of a uh, a drawer in the desk. So let me see what can I do for that. It needs to be a bit wider. Something like that. And then add something like a handle to it. So add a voxel that looks like a handle. Preferably you want, if it's already a dark color to begin with, you either want a lighter color or a much darker color to give the impression of like a handle that you can grab and pull. So that's what I'll do. May have overdone it there, let me see. It's four pixels and that's three. Let's go down to three. Let's make the handle a little smaller. From here, I guess, do I want to add any depth to it? Or do I want just an illusion of depth, depending on what angle you look at? Because I'm not really sure if players are going to be able to... Well, they might be able to see it. They have a rotating camera. Players are going to have a rotating camera, so they're going to be able to see the depth of the object at certain angles. So, we don't really want that. We want there to be depth to the object in order to continue to create the illusion of the object having um, uh, permeability in terms of in terms of the object feeling like an actual object you can interact with. You want the object to feel like something someone can reach out and touch even if they can't at all reach out and touch it, especially in a game that's non-VR. If this were VR, that would be a much easier to convey because VR, you can just do that. You can reach out and touch something. If you know what you're doing, you can convey that very easily. But since this is a three-dimensional, standard, flat-screen game, you can't really rely on that. So you have to actually fill out the details physically. The only time you ever want to create an illusion where the object doesn't have depth is if you can, if, is if you can get away with it. Um, kind of like a refrigerator if you make a model of a refrigerator but you don't actually know how to like animate or like put in anything in the refrigerator in terms of details all you gotta do is make out a hollowed out husk build a texture around it and give the impression that it's a refrigerator you can interact with but for this I can't really rely on that um, the desk is just gonna have to have depth because at certain angles you're gonna be able to see that it's basically like the equivalent of a handle that leads to nothing so for this, I want to give it the impression that you can actually like open something up and peer inside. And then I need a center space because I need to give the impression of a desk you can open up and look into. And then we're going to have to see what color we're going to use for the PC. 
which is going to be a bit tricky. I have to be careful about the size of it. Most people are... Uh, yeah, the PC, because the mouse is usually used with your right hand, even if you're left-hand dominant, the actual PC is going to have to be over here on the left with the monitor or the screen. It's going to have to be fairly thin. The monitor or the screen is going to have to be um, further to the right. We want to make it big, but not too big. Well, actually, no, it's a PC. We can make it pretty large. So, like, something like that. Whoop, it's an odd one. And then add in details such as... Most PCs now don't have really have a CD drive in them, but I can add little nodules to give the impression of, like, USB ports. So, like, up here. Oh, whoops. Repaint that. Just repaint it. Give the impression of a port. Maybe give the impression of, like, a red light for a power light. Hmm. What else? Oh. Oh. That's right. On the side, you'll have, like, um, a lot of PCs now, or some PCs, especially gaming PCs, will have glass casings. So you can see right through and see all the parts inside. I could actually hollow it out and show that, but right now I don't know if I have enough time and I need to eventually get to actually making a video game for people to play. So that's not preferable, but I can do this. And again, this adds more color variety to your model. Hmm. It's depending on if you're looking at it from a certain angle. Hmm. Not sure if I like some of it now. Might be too big, maybe. Let me add de repaint here to give the impression that there are different ports you can plug into. I have to work with the to the well. Actually, hmm. Actually, actually, actually. A lot of PCs have glass casings there too, so let me undo this. Oh, whoops. Let me redo that. Paint. Hmm. Maybe I should give the impression of a glass casing on the front as well. Like a full glass casing right on the front. Something like that. Maybe I need to add more depth to the object. Well, hmm. Oh, okay. I think I kind of know how I can do that. Maybe, but it will repaint the entire voxel. Maybe if I do, like, pick a color. That won't quite work. Replace a color. Oh, no, 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 no. Might be preferable if I go with that for now. Okay. I'll stick with that for now. Just for now. And then over here, I'll need to like do like a little plug-in for a mouse. Let's see. It's a bit bulky. It's not quite as detailed as I would like it to be. But right now, I'm going to work with what I have. And then I need like a monitor. So, whoops. Got to stop repainting for no good reason. Need a monitor. Whoa, too bulky, too bulky. That's tall enough, I would say. And then from here, what I do is... 
impression of a computer monitor screen. Uh, maybe like what color should I use for it? Just light blue, maybe? Oh no, maybe a darker, darker shade of blue. Lengthen it out a bit by about one or two pixels. Yeah, not too far because otherwise it runs right into the PC. Oh, hold on. I'm going to make the base a little bulkier. Wait, no, 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 no. Take that back. It's too bulky. Too bulky. It's too bulky. That's somewhat better. Okay, and then from here, go back, keep adding to the screen. Mm. Add a black background, repaint. Something like that. A little rough around the edges, but something like that, basically. And then a... probably like a computer mouse. That would be... let's say he has a... What type of color would he use for a computer mouse? Let's say he has a red computer mouse. Well, let's say... Let's say black with a slight tinge of red. Oh, what I can also do is, real quick, repaint. Repaint some of the tiles to make it seem like a mouse pad. A larger mouse pad, and then like a smaller mouse, like a fairly large mouse pad. And then from there, a smaller, bulkier mouse in the middle. That's sitting on top of it. To, well, depends on how much I can stretch it out, really. make a, a really large mouse pad. Yeah. Something fairly significant in terms of size and depth to make the actual mouse sitting atop of it stand out more. Might be too big. Might be too big. I think I overshot Unfortunately, I can't quite replicate the idea of, hmm. I'm going to stick, it's, it's super bulky. It's bulky to the point of being ridiculous. But for now, I'm going to stick with it. And then I'm going to, well, the, the color of the cord will have to be, well, no. Let's recolor the cord. Again, to add variation, let's make the cord for the mouse different. Give it the impression that it's wrapping behind the, uh, yeah, behind here. And then it's being plugged into the back, yeah. So I want it to kind of look like this. It's the same color as the PC, though, hmm. I may need to change that up a bit and lighten it, just slightly. I don't want it to make it look like the PC has some sort of weird 
biomechanical attachment to the thing. I need it to stand out as a cord specifically. That gives the impression, if someone looks back there, that there's a cord that's sort of touching up against the, the base of the computer monitor or screen. But I think the computer screen itself looks a little strange. I may have to just repaint this. and make it a little bigger. I may have to break my rule and make the computer screen a little bit bigger because otherwise it looks very peculiar. It's doable, but it looks a little peculiar and a little too small. There we go, that's better. That's preferable. Yeah, that's preferable to what I had, I would say. Even though I'm breaking my rule and going against what I said I would do. Then I'm gonna add that. Let me see. computer with desk. Let me see if it will... The other thing you have to be careful about in terms of placement is, as I've learned the hard way, is with the wall placements. If the walls jut out at certain angles, then you can't actually place certain textures or tiles because it will technically interfere with certain wall tiles. And then you have a situation like this where you have to, like, you can't place it against a wall, you have to place it slightly away from the wall. Which can be a bit frustrating. Can I move? No. Okay, so what I'm going to do is delete that. Reform a connection real quick. Add a tile. That's going to be a problem. Hmm. Hmm. What about the chair itself? The chair is pretty jumbo sized. Okay, what I want to do is. What might be a good idea is to place a connector here so that way players can walk in between the two because there's a bit of spacing. I'm going to have to work with this because there's an issue where edit tile, if you notice, the tile there has a bit of a box. So you can't really, um, you can walk up to and like touch it or even go through it depending on how you create the connection for the pathways. But... The tile itself has to take up a certain amount of space based on the dimensions it's given, and the dimensions are a little too large right now. So I'll have to see if I can fix that later. So for now, I'm just going to leave it at, he has it near the window here and the chair backed out here. The player can then move over here or move around it this way. So they can move behind the PC or they can move um, in this direction as well. They can cut across if they need to. I'm gonna have to leave it like that for now. And then save and then for now I'm done I'll be doing more work off camera